what is an IAM policy. We have already discussed what is an IAM policy, but we have to discuss in depth now. In AWS, we can manage access by creating policies and attaching them to the IAM identities or AWS resources. By now, I'm sure you understand what are identity and resources. And IAM policies, as I already told you, are JSON documents in AWS that when attached to an identity or resource, define their permission. So if you are an admin, you will have AWS managed policy, AWS full access or administrator access attached to your IAM user. And thus, you can perform admin operations on the AWS resources within your account. When you create a user, it has no permissions until and unless you add or assign policies to that. A user cannot be admin until and unless we have a policy that states that it has admin full access or administrator access and until and unless it has that, we cannot call it as an admin user or a user which has admin rights. And let's suppose your friend only has a EC2 all access policy attached to his or her IAM user. Then they can only perform operations on EC2. Similarly, we have a few points or rules about policies that you must be aware of. The first one that we have here is each statement includes information about a single permission that we are already aware of as we have an effect which is a boolean which either allows or denies a request. So every statement will in itself be used for a single permission. Second is if a policy includes multiple statements, AWS applies a logical or across the statements when evaluating them. We already know this, but we all know what is a logical or as well. I have given the example here. You can check that where we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 1 and 1, 1 is 1. This is a logical OR operation. Imagine the zeros to be allows and the 1 to be denied. So in the first statement that we have A and B, let the A and B be the resources. So allow, allow will be allow. Allow, deny will be deny. Deny, allow will be deny and deny, deny will obviously be denied. So that is why it applies a logical OR on the statements if there are multiple statements. And the third point that we have, if multiple policies apply to a request, AWS applies a logical OR across all of those policies when evaluating them. And that is why an explicit deny overrides all allow. And now I hope that's clear. Let's try and understand the relationship between policy and permissions. When we talk about the general meaning of policy, a policy is a set of ideas or plans that is used as a basis for decision making. Consequently, you write policies and based on that, we can make decision. So you can define policies. In general, we define policies, right? We define policies. We actually write down the plan on based on that, we make the decisions. And what is permission? Permission is the act of allowing someone to do something or of allowing something to happen. You are giving the permission for something to happen, isn't it? When we combine these two together, a policy is an object in AWS that when associated with an identity or resource defines their permissions. Their means the identity or resources permissions. Therefore, it clearly implies that we write policies and we can make the decision of who can access what. Let's see this flow diagram here and understand the action. This is the user from the dev team and this is the AWS service that is AWS EC2. That is quite clear. By default, the user has no access to EC2. This is the default action because it has no policies attached, so it will not have access to EC2. Hence, we write the policy for EC2. Either it could be allowed or denied. And if we want to allow, then we have to write a policy which actually explicitly allows the request. Next, AWS actually checks the request context. And if it satisfies the allow condition, then the user will get access to EC2. Else, the API will return the error message as you don't have the necessary permissions to access the resource. So I hope you got the point. There's a very simple example on how this works. Let's move on. Now let's understand the type of policies and access permissions. The first one is identity based policy. As the name suggests, an identity based policy lets you specify what that identity can do. That is its permission. They can be attached to an IAM user group or room. Let's suppose you want a user to create instances or run instances or query a table data. So you can attach a policy to that IAM user for it to be able to perform those operations. And identity based policies can be managed or in line. We will discuss about them. Don't worry. And the next one that we have here is resource based policies. As the name suggests, resource based policies are attached to a resource. Let's suppose you want a user to have access to perform operations on a S3 bucket. 
what we can do is we can create resource based policy at s3 to grant permissions and even though the user doesn't have identity based policy that user or principal will still have permissions to work on that bucket because it has a resource based policy attached for that particular principal or user next is permission boundary a permission boundary is an advanced feature for using a managed policy to set the maximum permissions that an identity based policy can grant to an iam entity and you need to understand that your identity based policy and permission boundary define how much you can do but having said that the permission boundary is not used to grant permission instead it's used to define the maximum permission that is why it is called a permission boundary and the permission boundary is not used to grant permission instead it is used to define the maximum permission next is organization scp and this is also a very important service called aws organization and we create service control policies that is scp that are used to define maximum permissions for account members of an organization or ou here as well we don't use scp to grant permissions but instead we use them to limit permissions and you can actually override implicit allows using scps for members across various accounts under your organization's umbrella next is access control list we have already heard of access control list in s3 before and in retrospect acls are like resource based policies although they are the only policy type that does not use the json policy document structure you might have seen acls in s3 yes like we have for amazon s3 access control list which enables us to manage access to buckets and objects and that's the difference between iam and acls iam or bucket policies can only be attached to buckets but not the objects in the bucket acls can be assigned to buckets as well as objects in it and that's the difference between them here as well when a request is received against a resource amazon s3 checks the corresponding acl to verify that the requester has the necessary access permission and based on that it will either allow or deny the request at last we have the important one we have the session policies so when you think of session you imagine a scenario where you want to provide a mechanism where each request can be validated that it's being sent by the same user session policies are similar to that hence session policies are advanced policies that you pass as a parameter when you programmatically create a temporary session for a role or federated user i gave you an example of sts and uh, temporary credential where we assumed a role that's a type of session policy or role session that we can use here as well session policies limit the permission for a created session but do not grant permissions now imagine you want to have like three wishes so i want to wish for a big house a big car and a lot of money and to grant these wishes we need a genie he says master your wishes are my command and he is the one who will grant you these wishes similarly you should relate to this as you are the user or entity your wishes are the policies the genie is obviously aws and the things that you want are your resources remember this carefully aws is ready to give you anything you want but you need to ask for it and with proper wishes or commands and that's how it translates you as an i am user or identity who wants something or wants to use a resource in aws aws is going to provide you when you tell aws that you have enough permissions to be granted access to the resources you want and as i have told you 100 times by now always remember these words who can access what i hope you got the point